Welcome to the Vegan Transformation. I'm your host, Angela Crawford. I'm a psychologist, a vegan educator, a transformational coach, and a food for life instructor. And I'm passionate about the power of a plant-powered lifestyle to help us achieve better health, to live compassionately, and to connect with our most authentic self to create a kinder, healthier, more sustainable world. And this channel is for you to empower you wherever you are on your plant-based or vegan journey and to give you tools to thrive and to feel your best as you're living or moving towards a plant-powered vegan lifestyle. And so today I want to introduce you to my guest, Bianca Jane Stairs. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Yeah. And let me just say a little bit about her. Um, she's the founder of Overhaul Health and Wellness, and she delivers high value plant-based coaching that empowers women to achieve sustainable health and weight loss. And she provides a compassionate professional approach focusing on holistic health habit change, nutrition, emotional resilience, and helping clients create lasting transformations for peak health and confidence. So welcome, Bianca. So glad you're here. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for be, having me here. Thank you. Yeah, we got to meet each other, you know, maybe a month or two ago um, when you invited me to speak on your chan your Facebook um, channel or your live program. And that yeah. was really cool to get to know you. And we're across the pond from each other. Um, you're over in England, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, chilly old England right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, well, I, I'm so glad you're here. And I guess first thing I like to do is just find out more about your story. Can you share a little bit about what led you to go plant-based and or vegan and sort of what that path was that got you there? Okay. It's quite a journey. Are you ready for this? <laughs> sure. And you can share whatever parts you want to, but you know, I, I, I think hearing some people's journeys can be helpful for others on their own journeys. Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, this, I mean, this, it's, it's a little bit of a little bit of a roller coaster of a journey. So I'll go, I'll start from the beginning. Um, I, I think kind of like the, the earliest that it really needs to, this story really needs to start is when I was backpacking across the world. I was in New Zealand um, and I'd been backpacking for a while and I liked this kind of drinking lifestyle. I was much younger than anyway. And I was drinking a fair amount um, and the drinking. And then I was also eating like a really bad diet. Um, obviously with the alcohol, then I'd be either hungover and I'd feel ashamed of myself. So I would either starve myself or because I worked in hospitality, I would just live off of fries all day. So I had very, very poor health. My nutrition was non-existent. I kind of liked the idea of, of getting into nutrition, but just didn't know where to start or anything like that. To top it off, I worked in a steakhouse as well. So I was serving these prime pieces of steak at the table I was talking about it like I was drinking the wine eating the food didn't really think didn't really connect anything um, and then pretty much everything changed um, so when we was in New Zealand we were we, I was right in Queenstown which is on the slopes and I went snowboarding one day and I was really hungover and just wasn't paying attention. I was really, really tired. I was, obviously didn't have any energy because I wasn't eating. Um, and I looked, I think I'd had about two sips of Coca-Cola that day um, and caught an edge of my snowboard and scorpion rolled forward down the mountain about six or seven times. Uh, as soon as I came to an abrupt pause, I knew that something was severely wrong. Like I was like, okay, something is not okay so my friends came running up the mountain to me straight away one of my friends no, no idea how but he kind of recognized what it is um and they took me off to the skidooed me off to the medical center and I was kind of like a rag doll on the back of this skidoo I was just mm -hmm. in like just shock like pain mm -hmm. shock and they took me there and they pumped me full of morphine, didn't seem to be working. So they then helicoptered me off to the nearest hospital. And it wasn't until that they then had to put me through a scan that they came out and said, right, 
we need to operate on you now because you have lacerated your spleen. It's a grade four, which is just basically like a complete, it was like someone had gone in and cut it, it was like a complete incision. Mm -hmm. And wow. she said, look, if you, if you don't take this operation, you will die from internal bleeding. Um, however, if you do take it just to let you know, there's a 50, 50 chance of survival. I was like, <laughs> Right. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to have to do that. Is there any chances I could call my family just to let them know? Um, and so, of course, I, I, I then phoned them. Bless him. On the phone, my dad was like, oh, it's really nice to hear from you. I haven't heard from you in a couple of months. I was like, mm, not quite. As you can tell, um, mm -hmm. I took the operation and my the uh, Dr. Spate, who operated on me, really really chuffed with his results with his operation obviously came through everything was fine but when I was recovering I was kind of just sitting there doing nothing I had about three months worth of recovery where I, I mean getting up and walking to the bathroom was just exhausting because they had to cut th straight through your abdominal muscles so I was doing a lot of rehab and repairing and it kind of just uh, emotionally I felt drained I felt really disappointed in my sorry that's fly I felt really disappointed <laughs> in myself and my life I felt like I'd thrown my life away while I was traveling yes it was like I was not treating my body how it should be treated. And I come from like, uh, not, not a massively conscious family, but, you know, quite fit and healthy, but not, not nutritionally healthy. And so I felt really bad and really guilty. And I dove into to Netflix. I, I think I exhausted all of the new girls as it was out then. <laughs> and then I found Netflix documentaries like What the Health, That Sugar Pill. And I watched these and something clicked in my brain. Immediately, I turned pescatarian. So I cut out meat. I was like, oh, why am I eating meat? Like, I don't need, we don't need meat to survive. <laughs> oh, in my head, I thought, oh, we need fish to survive. We need dairy for calcium, right? We need fish for some protein amigo. We need that. And I cut out sugar as well at the same time. That didn't last long. I'm not going to lie, the sugar. Um, and so <laughs> for five years, I was pescatarian. And I was on my high horse thinking that I was doing all of the right things. I literally had a tagline when people said to me, and I'm really embarrassed about this, but I'm an open book as well. Um, I literally had a tagline, people were like, why do you eat fish, but you don't eat meat? And I used to say, fish don't have feelings. Mm -hmm. Like that was literally my comeback. And I feel ashamed to say that now as 100% vegan, as plant-based. Um, but that was just my tagline because I was so oblivious and it, I was turning a blind eye. So I was kind of being a hypocrite, right? I was like, accepting for some and not accepting for others. I actually wrote a post really recently, which my family didn't like because I called my family out. We were an self-proclaimed animal loving family we have do dogs cats horses fish but they eat beef and they eat pork mm -hmm. so anyway I was kind of stuck in this realm for five years and it wasn't until I came so, uh, so sorry so as I was recovering I watched those documentaries and then I kind of found this passion for nutrition and I took up a health coaching course and I thought to myself do you know what this is a very expensive course but I've got nothing else to do right now <laughs> and at the end of it I should be able to start turning my life around a little bit and live a slightly healthier life anyway so that came through we I went through that through that program for a year fell in love with coaching and wanted to help people with their with their diet and nutrition and I thought I was in such a great point but when I came to Brighton and met some friends of mine who were vegan they opened their heart not in a pushy way and this is something that I really really wanted to add they were very much like if you ask us a question we'll answer but we won't push back now I'm quite the opposite like if I'm not at work if I'm not working and coaching I'm like why aren't you vegan you're a hypocrite and this and that and like <laughs> Kind of in a jokey way but they were very the, much the opposite and something clicked in me and I made a new new year's resolution 2020 January I'm going to cut out meat and go completely vegan I literally went overnight and my god it was difficult it was hard it was very hard but I had their support and something just clicked inside my body like I started getting more energy I started having more focus more clarity um, my body just completely changed um and just things things just felt better and felt different and so I used to nap three hours a day every day right mm -hmm. that's how poor and low my energy was that's how poor my nutrition was I used to nap three hours a day every single day 
the last time I napped in the afternoon, I couldn't even nap because I was just, I just had my eyes wide open. Um, and I think that was like about four or five months ago. And before that, I don't think I've napped for about four years. So my energy has, has completely doubled and I feel totally different. And throughout this transition, I knew that I was pretty much sitting on this treasure box of health. Like it's the only way I can describe it is I was, I was sitting on this like secret knowledge that if we eat plants, we're not only saving ourselves, but we're saving all of the 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 death, the the rape, the the exploitation that is just everywhere in the world. We are improving our own health, improving our own energy, living healthier and happier lives, saving the planet. And it all just kind of clicked like the last piece to a jigsaw puzzle. And right then and there, when I had this realization that this is what I need to be shouting from the rooftops, I changed from a generic weight loss coach to what well, I, I transitioned a couple of times. But now I'm a plant based weight loss coach, a women's plant based weight loss coach. Because I just couldn't sit on this knowledge and not help people, like pull people over as well. Some people yeah. who come to me, they want, they're already plant-based and some people, um, they come to me and they want to be plant-based. Either way, I want to pull people in to this healthier and happier life where we can be so much more in alignment as like a human being. Does that make sense? Yeah. I told you it was a long story. Sorry. <laughs> Well, first of all, just so much courage to navigate all that. I mean, it sounds like a horrific accident and being able to get through that and get through the surgery and the recovery and then decide like, I'm going to make some positive changes for my health once you learned, you know, the pathway for that and then mm -hmm. committing even deeper over time, you know, with when you had the right information and the right support. And it's clear, like, it's made a positive difference in your life in many ways, you know, mm. and, you know, I guess I'd be curious to know, um, how did your loved ones and others react to you becoming plant based and then vegan? And, and how did you handle those reactions? Um, well, first of all, everyone that I that found out, I think I must have made a post on Facebook about it. And everyone who found out who knew me, I got a message within the first 24 hours and it was either what are you going to do without poached eggs or what are you what are you going to do for without chocolate because I loved both of those I was having like two three poached eggs every single day they were my favorite thing to have and chocolate I mean I like a family bar or a share bar I never knew what those words were family or share when it came to chocolate so yes. for people who knew me like I I loved these foods it wasn't because I didn't want to eat these foods it wasn't because meat didn't taste good to me mm -hmm. I loved the flavors and the textures of all of these foods I was a foodie I mean mm -hmm. I used to go out to like seven ten degustation like meals with my friend and we'd get wine and food pairing massive foodie absolutely love foodie uh, uh love lo loved food so my loved ones were a little bit shocked but at the same time I was traveling so mm -hmm. to be honest with you the only person that was like directly affected was actually my partner who is mm -hmm. uh who at the time my partner at the time who was uh very much a meat eater but for them it didn't really matter at all because I would just kept myself to myself so I was I, I was very lucky in the sense that I didn't have like uh, a spouse. I didn't live with with parents or I didn't have kids mm -hmm. or anything like that. But I do coach and I do speak to a lot of uh, a lot of women who are in all of those situations yeah. as well. Yeah. So um, in all honesty, I don't think I would have cared mm -hmm. like in the nicest possible way, because this was a decision for me. And mm -hmm. I knew it would affect me and I wasn't going to make them do something that they didn't want to do. Um, so I kind of I kind of didn't care because I knew that it was there was no negative to it. It was just all yes. positive. So so why yes. care? Why let someone else's opinions on whether your lentil bolognese is better than theirs or not? Mm -hmm. Like like yes. affects me. <laughs> yes. Well, and how did you handle the foods you were so attached to? What did you do as you became vegan? For example, the poached eggs, you know, I mean, chocolate, you can still enjoy, you know, a dark chocolate that doesn't have milk in it. But um, what about the other foods like the poached eggs that you had been really attached to? 
Oh my god! Like uh, as a foodie as well, I was um I loved I loved cheese, right? Blue Mm -hmm. cheese. I loved all cheese. I loved dairy. Um, which four years later now makes me want to gag. It's just Mm -hmm. we change so much. Like our Mm -hmm. palate changes incredibly, and our gut flora changes so much. Um, but uh, how did I handle that? So before I went, nope, that's it, done, dusted. Um, I did try and go plant based, but it was it was the chocolate and the what well, the chocolate it was the dairy right the dairy mm-hmm. and the eggs that stopped me. So I did actually start going to um, a farm. This was before the the New Year's resolution. I started going to a farm where they had happy chickens and mm-hmm. where they were rescued and stuff. And just it just got to a point where I'm like, this can't be right. This can't be right. And um, I just did a little bit more research and I was like, no, that's got to change. Like I can't be having, I can't be vegan, but have eggs. It it just didn't align with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, It didn't align with the health. And when you do the research, it doesn't actually make sense anyway. Right. There's more negatives than positives. So it, it just, it just Mm -hmm. required a little bit of pushing on my part from me, Mm -hmm. but how do I handle that? Black salt. Honestly, Mm -hmm. The eggs, black salt, Kalanamak, if you haven't heard of it, just go and Google it. You'll find it from like uh, um, maybe like what do you guys have in the States? Do you have like like foreign shops? We usually have like Asian shops or Oriental shops. Mm, Is that what sure. you guys call it? Yeah, sometimes there's things like that. Yeah. OK, well, all you'll find on Amazon. But yeah, black mm-hmm. salt, it's like this rock salt and it's uh, high sulfur. It smells a little bit eggy, tastes a little bit eggy. So for me, that transition, and I still have it with my like egg, with my tofu every single day. That was the thing that got me away from eggs. That was so, the main. So thing. like you might have a tofu scramble with this kala. I, I can never pronounce it kalam namak, yeah. but black yeah, salt. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. So it kind of getting... gives that flavor. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I was getting the flavor there um with without all of the negative uh health side effect right um so that was that with the chocolate (laughs) I just had to remind myself and this is what I do with my clients every day is connect with my why right Mm -hmm. so the eggs yes I wanted dippy eggs by the way I've made vegan egg yolk and it is Mm -hmm. just as good as just as good as regular egg yolk so there are so many ways that you can replace these things but with chocolate I know that there's vegan chocolate out there, but I'm going to say to you right now, they are not the same. For someone who's been vegan for four years, I couldn't care less about dairy chocolate anymore. But for Mm -hmm. that transitional phase, I was one of those people that comes like I speak to these people all the time and they're like, yeah, but vegan cheese and vegan chocolate aren't the same. And this is what Mm -hmm. I've told someone who's completely changed their, their diet overnight. And this is what changed them. They are not the same. Mm -hmm. we need to acknowledge that they are not the same that is okay it's okay that they're not the same this didn't come from Mm -hmm. the cutter but they are a good replacement and Mm -hmm. so I was telling myself that and every single day connecting with my why Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for the animals I'm doing this Mm -hmm. for my house and with those two combined and with just a little bit of determination going hey it's not going to kill me as I got as you grow through the like the craving stage, you mm-hmm. crave it less and less. That bacteria dies off in your gut, so you become less and less compelled to have those foods. Replace my sugar fix with dates. Oh my goodness, dates, dates and mm-hmm. peanut butter. They became my my new my new thing. Um, mm-hmm. And have those in replacement, and tell myself and my body, it's okay without it. You've got a replacement now, and just keep connecting with my why. Yeah, those those are great great reminders that. Yeah, things when you're transitioning, things don't just necessarily taste the same, you know, there, but there, there's an adjustment period, as you're saying, for both your palate and also your gut to adjust. And, you know, and the reality is, you know, that our food manufacturers make things so high in salt, fat and sugar, you know, knowing that we get addicted to that, you know, and Mm -hmm. We were really never designed to have it in such levels as is available to us now. So it does sometimes take some re readjusting your your taste buds and everything to a healthier like food, you know, menu. But then when you do, it like starts to taste good. And then that other stuff just feels like, you know, like the really, I don't know, really fatty or sugary or you know kind of whatever it just doesn't taste the same 
A hundred percent. And I can I can honestly say that giving giving up animal based products, my palate has increased. Well, not only has my cooking gotten much better because it kind of <clears> needed to. Yeah. Um, not only has my cooking improved, which is just something that we have to suck up and say, hey, look, if I want to be healthy, I'm going to have to do this. Right. Yeah. Fast food isn't isn't health. It's not healthy. Mm-hmm. That's an unhealthy life. It's just one of those things like I, t- I tell my clients. Right. I know that you don't like cooking and I know you don't enjoy it. We don't have to enjoy it to just be healthy. Okay. So like, I don't like cooking, but my God, my cooking has improved since I've been vegan. But also along with that, my taste buds have, like you said, right. Mm -hmm. Everything is um, much more sensitive. Things taste better. And like you said, these foods have been made to be hyper palatable. So when we're constantly consuming the, the high sugar, high fat, high salt diet and foods, your palate just gets destroyed it becomes totally numb but when you're cooking with all of these flavors and spices and herbs which are all packed and loaded full of antioxidants all good things um Mm -hmm. and no calories like like i I tell my clients i'm like literally load on those herbs and spices for me guys like (laughs) please um and when you cook with all these things like you get to you get to taste all of these flavors all the different you get to taste the flavors of the world from your own kitchen and it's and it's incredible Yeah, no, that's amazing. Like you, I wasn't a cook much before and it's really changed my life that now I really love to cook. And even for those that don't, as you're saying, making a commitment for your health and then also finding like simple meals. There's a lot of very simple meals that can still be really healthy. It doesn't always have to be complex complex or lengthy. You know, there's a lot of really simple plant-based whole food kinds of meals that mm-hmm. you can choose from. So I'm, I imagine that's one of the things you help people discover in your work, you know, what some of those oh, would be. And a hundred percent. I'm all about making things super duper simple. Like I don't want to be, I don't want to be writing 25 ingredients down for one recipe, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm simple. I don't have much time. I can't be bothered to cook. So yeah. I will try and find and help my clients find like simple recipes chicken broccoli and rice think of that that's your typical like bodybuilders meal Mm -hmm. well we just make rice tofu and broccoli and it's even quicker because you don't have to cook the tofu like yeah it's just like it's even quicker so just these really really super duper super duper quick and nutritious meals Mm -hmm. and make them Mm -hmm. delicious that's what's that's definitely where where i thrive yeah yeah. And, and, and as you mentioned, a lot of it is about finding the flavorings and seasonings you like, you know, healthy spices and herbs, healthy sauces that are, you know, plant-based. That's what makes the food. I mean, and for those of us, when I used to eat meat, I mean, it's not like I just ate meat raw or I just had it with nothing on it. It always had, it was always cooked. Yeah. I wanted it very well cooked because I always felt like Ugh, it was kind oh, of gross. No, you were a bottom of the shoe kind of kind of woman. Oh what? We we used to say <laughs> I worked in hospitality. So anyone who want, ordered a well done steak, I have to say, I worked in a tourist town. I have to say it was all American guests. Yes, <laughs> they yes. would all want their, their steak well done. And then the chefs yes. would always like, Do you want the bottom of my shoe instead? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, now I find it all gross, but um mm. at the time, you know, yeah, I think there was something in me that didn't feel comfortable handling meat or, you know, just kind of there was something that felt off, but I felt I had to do it. And Is of course it, you had to season it. You couldn't indicate it. Just... Yeah, yes, exactly. And that you know, most mean... of us have to really season it a lot. It's not like usually it's just great by itself, you know. So at any rate, it's just it's a journey to discover this whole other world. Like, wow, mm. you know plants let's like go let's go back to the basics you know I know Um, that's that's like me to in order to handle any raw meat I had to use a knife and fork I didn't mm want to use tongs because I didn't want to um I I didn't want to put germs on my kitchen counter on the cutlery on my my plastic tongs and you think surely that was like a little bit of your brain going something's not quite right here if you don't Mm -hmm. want to handle that And that's grossing you out. Why are you just then cutting it and just like almost like putting like a like Mm -hmm. a blinker and it's just like, okay, Mm -hmm. just just put it in. I don't want to see it. It's like that should be some sort of indicator. And what you mentioned is I always like to talk about this. I was watching an advert like a few months ago and I saw them crumbling in flavoring into a uh, beef dish. 
So when people say, is it not bland? I'm sorry, but there's products that have been created to taste like beef to season beef. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, if you have beef flavored things to flavor beef, surely that just tells you that your beef is unflavored in the first place. Yes. So, you know, we're, we're starting off on even kill grounds here, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, as you've been living this lifestyle, you know, and especially going fully plant based, fully vegan, how has that affected you in different ways? Like physically, you mentioned a lot of energy and not needing to nap. Um, what about like emotionally, spiritually, and other ways? Are there other mm, effects? I mean, you've emotionally, had? I'm very much on my high horse now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more about that. <laughs> I said, okay, so uh, one thing which I would love, I'm, sh I'm sure you'll probably ask me about anyway, is kind of like the ripple effect. And so my partner has recently completely just said, yep, I'm 100% vegan, which has been great. And so my That's response, wonderful. I know, I'm so happy. So my response was, come and enjoy the high horse with me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's just, you know, that, of course, that is a joke. But at the same time, fe things feel so much more in alignment. And I don't know whether it's spiritual or not, because I'm not massively spiritual. Mm -hmm. I definitely, I manifest things in, like, in my life. And I, I journal and I talk to the universe mm -hmm. and so on and so forth um however you want to call it however there is something and you might call it spiritually but there is something in me that just feels so much more aligned and connected like I've always been an animal lover anyway like I would go on a walk with my family and go and pet the cows but something was just disconnected and it's that mm -hmm. societal programming that mm -hmm. cows are okay to cows are okay to look at but they need to be eaten but then our cats they need to be put I mean mine's literally mm -hmm. sat on my like 200 pounds Audi right now because I mm -hmm. created a little little bed for her she's so cute mm -hmm. um and so I've always been an animal lover but something just feels so much more in alignment now mm -hmm. uh, whether that's mm -hmm. spiritual or mental emotional mm -hmm. I'm not too sure but it just it it feels good it feels yeah. good and it feels good to know that you're not contributing to masses and masses and masses of slaughtering and uh and uh torture and trauma and just just even taking a peek and I mean like a five second look at a documentary that reveals what happens out there you get to know that that is not what you're supporting yes and I I cannot explain that to someone who's not really vegan or plant-based um mm -hmm. talking about my partner so about four or five months ago we went for a really long walk and we love going for our walks because we get to talk about loads of things and he was still in that processing phase of like okay I'm doing this for my health but if I go out then you know if something's served then I'll just eat it and so he was going through the, like the the, mm -hmm. the the processing phase himself um and he was just kind of like saying like why well why would you you know drink alcohol and say that you would put poison in your body but not eat meat and it was just that like it's just that little bit of cognitive dissonance is that what you call mm -hmm. it right and it's just that mm -hmm. disconnection um and yeah and so it, we just need to take that time to allow ourselves to be open to learning more I think I'm totally going off track here but but learning more so we can have that that synchronicity between what we feel what we eat who we are does that make sense yeah. or did I yeah. just go off on a complete tangent yeah, no, you expressed it beautifully. And that was actually one of the things that really came through in the research I did for my forthcoming book, The Vegan Transformation, which was... Um, I'm excited for this. Thank you. You know, the majority it, it, of the vegans... I in... <clears throat> what now? I said it will have a place here. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> thank you. Um you know, the people that I interviewed, the majority said one of the biggest changes for them was exactly what you just described, which is this feeling of alignment. Like I've always loved animals, yeah. you know, mm. and some part of me felt a disconnect, but I never thought there was another choice or I did, mm. you know, I never really attended to that disconnect because, you know, most of society is eating animals, you know, um, but then when they took that vegan path and gave up, stopped eating animals, embraced the plant world, it's just like a weight is lifted that you don't even know was there in some ways. Yes, yes. 
A hundred percent. And I'm ah, oh, that's really interesting that you said that because obviously I've not interviewed all of these people, but yes. that makes that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just freeing. I know for me it felt freeing. It's just like, wow, you know, I, I don't know. It is freeing to say no to that whole industry. that whole animal industry and to embrace plants. You know, that just mm -hmm. felt felt really good. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's a surprising thing that I think a lot of people experience once they take that leap, you know, and, yeah. um, and then the good news is it's not, you know, it's, it's not like it's harmful for your health. If you eat a healthy whole food plant based, you know, diet, it's it's the best thing you can do for reversing heart disease and, you know, preventing type two diabetes and many mm -hmm. of the kind of, you know, and to lose weight and to just have a healthier body, mind and spirit. You know. mm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that alignment actually actually happened in my partner. So a couple about a week or less than a week after he was like, Yeah, babe, I'm definitely vegan. Uh, we were at the gym and we were speaking to someone and she was like, Oh yeah, I'd love to open my own sanctuary and have loads of animals. And just without without even thinking, he just went, How about you save some chickens and some cows? instead of just cats and dogs and stop eating them and he was like oh my god I don't know where that came from he was like, where, where did that come from and then obviously he felt he, he felt a little bit like a hypocrite because he'd only just gone vegan but it's just one yes. of those I, I feel like that's a perfect example as well of that happening for him is that mm -hmm. um that alignment kind of falling in and being like yeah, yeah but yeah. wake up <laughs> yes yeah I guess you know um there can be challenges with any lifestyle change, but there's also when you're doing it and like you say, connecting with your why, there's so many benefits on, on multiple le levels and mm -hmm. you're not leaving yourself out of the equation, you know, your own health and well-being and mm. peace can benefit as well. So mm. that's awesome. I think at the end of the day, what I say to my clients as well, because I, I focus a lot on weight, it's not just nutrition. So mm -hmm. a lot of what I do is weight loss. Um, and the same thing that I would say to them is you're not going to look back at your life and say, oh, my God, do you remember how good the ice cream was when we were at so and so and that <laughs> chocolate flake was delicious? You would be saying, oh, my God, do you remember when we spent that afternoon on the beach watching the sunset? You're never going to remember that one bite, the last bite, the, the yes. last bit on your plate. You're never going to remember that specific burger or anything like yes. that. And yeah. that, like that's not. That's that's not what you're ever going to remember. So why hold on to something just for a couple of bites of flavor? Um, hold on to the memories that you're creating with people and the good things that you're doing to the planet and how that makes you feel. Well, definitely. I, I love all of that. That's beautiful. Why don't, um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your work and what you offer people um, and, you know, just kind of share a little bit about what you do and what, you know, how people can connect with you as well. Mm, yeah. So thank you for, for allowing me that opportunity, by the mm -hmm. way. So um, as I said, I went and did the health coaching and life coaching certificates, as you can see behind me. And then uh, I found I just really fell in love with the power of plants and everything like over the 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 the, the bit leading up to when I went vegan, like it was building up and building up. I didn't really talk about mm -hmm. it, but it was building up and building up buy more books, doing more nutrition studies. And it was just kind of that, that, that couple of the friends that really tipped me over the edge. Um, and so I went from just a plant-based weight loss to a transition weight loss to a, um, a, a, I went from weight loss to plant-based transitioning to plant-based weight loss. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I noticed in this realm was a little bit of a, like you've got your weight loss stuff and then you've got um, nutrition stuff so I took a nutrition course but I had no trust in the course even though it's like it, it's fully certified like it was a genuine course and they sent me all the material and I was going through it and they started talking about how good eggs are and how good meat is and lean meat and organic meat and I just didn't have any trust in it so I couldn't even follow that. And so there was a lot of conflicting information. And then you hear a lot about a ketogenic diet, which I mean, it helps you lose weight, but it kills you. Like mm -hmm. it, it's like, okay, if you want to go keto, there's a shortcut to death. So I'll see mm -hmm. you later. At least you're going to be skinny when you get there. <laughs> if you sustain it skinny, even huh? because a lot of people can't sustain it over time either. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so there was just, there was a lot of confusion and, 
very few people at the time I, I that I could see were actually creating this this plant based weight loss world like this combination. And so I wanted to really fully support women and show them how the standard American diet is not doing anything for them and how mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, relationships, how their body, their health, their energy, how it's all connected, mm -hmm. but then also tie in with the way that I was feeling, the transformation that I was receiving through the plant base. So I created that together. And um, that was kind of like the birth of my Facebook group, which is the Women's Plant-Based Weight Loss Support Club. Should probably shorten that. Um, and so that's my free Facebook group. I go in there live every single week to deliver free trainings. I do believe that there should be an element and level of free support that people can go in. So for anyone from any walk of life can still get that support, like the things that you we talked before this, like the things that you're doing. I think it's really important for um, everyone across the world to have access to that right, the right information and the right studies, mm -hmm. stuff that hasn't been cherry picked, stuff that's actually genuine for our health. Mm -hmm. um so i've got that facebook support community and for those of them who are really really wanting to make a change roughly around every month it's looking around every four weeks at the moment i'm doing like an intensive free boot camp so five days we're actually on day four today so after this call um i've got mm -hmm. I've, I've got a couple of calls and then we're going on the the boot camp so i do free five day challenges for or boot camps for people who are really really wanting to make that shift and then for those who want extra support, they come to me for one-to-one -one coaching. So I've got kind of like three different places where I offer that, awesome. su that support. Great. Well, we'll definitely put those links in the dis in the description of this um, video. So, so, so that you. people that might be interested in connecting with you um, and your community can know how to do that. So we'll definitely share that. Absolutely. Um, so I've made so many resources like seven day meal plans, a guide on how to be a healthy vegan. I've got a uh, constantly sharing free resources and stuff like that as well. So fully supported. That's wonderful. That's, that's really important. You know, I think <clears throat> I need a drink of water here. <laughs> I've got, I've been sipping mine throughout. <clears throat> I think whatever our reasons for choosing this journey, whether it's ethical, solely ethical for the animals, for our health, for the environment, or some combination of those, I've just come to believe we, it's really important we include our own well being in the process, you know, because to be sustainable in whatever we're trying to bring out in the world, we've got to be healthy and well too, you know. And so I think a lot of compassionate people forget to take care of themselves, you know. Mm. I, I know that in my former profession as a psychotherapist, you know, sometimes those of us that are caring for others don't care for our own well being. And then it takes a toll. And I think the same can be true for those of us that are compassionate vegans. You know, we need to include ourselves too. A hundred percent. And you just, you just brought up something that reminded me. So I did a talk recently um, at a vegan festival here in the UK on the South coast. And I really, really tailored it to compassionate vegans because mm -hmm. what I find is that the reason why people revert back to veganism is like, okay, so you've, you've, you've made the change, you've done all the hard stuff, like the mental stuff, and you've done all the mental, mm -hmm. the, the mental pulling and all the work, but then you find something that doesn't align with you because you you jump into it in the wrong way, in the wrong approach, and then it doesn't work for you um because of the way that you're doing it and then so you revert back so i found that the the reason why and you might you've probably done much more research than i have but the reason why people revert back is because they're not doing it properly and they feel like it doesn't work for them it's not because a vegan diet is lacking in anything at all you can get everything you need from a vegan diet everything right that you need at its purest healthiest cleanest form it's not that it doesn't work it's that people do it wrong and so they might drastically reduce their calories or they not, might just get rid of um, everything and just eat vegetables. And so they're lacking in protein. They might sure. be overeating in carbs and they've just not got the right balance. So in order for us to stay compassionate and stay in alignment with our choices, I want mm -hmm. vegans to be fully supported in their health. So what you said mm -hmm. there really, really resonated with me because if you want to continue doing your work, if you want to keep fighting for the animals, if you want to go to protests, if you want to go to, uh, what what do they, do they call it? Liber like liberating, liberating animals, mm -hmm. right? Freeing animals. If you want to do all that work, if you want to support the environment, if you're 
want to be an activist, you need that mental energy. You need to be able to clear your mind. You need to be able to manage your stress. Keep the, the disease and the illness off and the energy up as high as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And doing all of that doesn't just come from the work that you do. It comes from the work that you do on yourself as well. So there is also that angle, 100%. Yeah, beautifully said. Well, as we're closing, do you have any final thoughts or words that you wanted to share? On top of everything else? I feel like I've spoken <laughs> way too much today. <laughs> well, you, um, what you shared was really, I mean, I, first of all, your story was inspiring and I love what you're doing to support others. Um, so, but, but if you have a final word, I want to just give you that chance. <laughs> oh, a final word that I feel like there's so much pressure in a final word. I, think... <laughs> I know totally. You don't need to, nothing major, just just want to, I don't want to cut you off as we're wrapping up here. If there's anything no. else. I think, I think uh, community, 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 community. Mm. That is so, so freaking important. There's, you've got social media at your fingertips, right? As much as I hate social media, you can mm -hmm. also love it, right? You can get yeah. rid of all of the crap that just builds up in your head, that builds up all the stress. You don't need all of that. But you have a space and a place to connect, right? You've got yeah. all of the places that you're at, all the places that I'm at, all of the places that all the other plant-based nutritionists and dietitians and, and everyone else is at but build that community, get people around you. If you are in an isolated place, I speak to so many people and they're like, yeah, but I live in mm -hmm. Texas and there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's no plant-based options around here. Then you need to be in and around people that match yeah. your vibration, that match your frequency. Because if you don't, you will be compelled to do things that you don't want to do. You'll be then stuck mm -hmm. in guilt and shame cycles. And so I think community is so important. And that's why I have the free community there. Some people yeah. don't even want, like they don't want coaching. They don't want any of my freebies. They just want to be around people. And I'm like, hey, girl, if that's if that's what you want, then, then that's perfect. So I think surrounding yourself with the people like yourself and the people who are able to give us all of this incredible information um, and support and yeah, just be surrounded and connected with as many people as you possibly can. Because together, this sounds yeah. so cheesy, but together we are stronger like as, as individuals, but also as yeah. vegans. Yeah, no, I, what you said, I'm, I'm very glad that you said that you felt um, called to share that because one, I'm with you a hundred percent. And, you know, when you were sharing the reasons people sometimes find it challenging to stay plant-based or, <clears throat> or vegan, it's both what you said about, you know, not maybe knowing the ways to do it in a balanced, healthy way that nourishes the body because it's a new way of eating. But the other part is exactly what you are just sharing now is sometimes it's that lack of community or support, you know, being that only vegan or plant-based eater in their community. Um, so finding communities, if there's not, you know, there are sometimes local communities um, that are veg groups that you can join, but if you can't find one of those, definitely you want to find them online and and the, there are many wonderful Facebook groups and yours is an example of one that people can be part of where like other people are on that same journey and can cheer you on or support mm. you if you have an obstacle. Mm. I mean, you know, as humans, we are designed to be connected. We, we, we are, are designed to live in tribes like that. Whether you like it or not, that's what yes, we need to thrive. Yes. Um, and even for people to survive, like just just being relatively happy, we need connection. No matter how much of an introvert you are, you still need to fill up your social cup as a human being. And yes. being able to do that with people who are in alignment with you and your goals and your desires are yes. so incredibly important. Because otherwise, if you're surrounded by people who don't agree with you, mm -hmm. that is just the same as not being connected as anyone else. Because yes. intrinsically like that, that need human need to be connected isn't there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. for, I mean, just just get out there and make some friends and use social media because as a human being, we need it. Yes. And it can be one of the best ways to find those communities that are, you know, your heart community, you know, that really align for you. So, absolutely. Well, yeah, well, thank you so much for joining me here today. I, I'm really, you know, grateful for you sharing your, your story and your wisdom. So glad to have connected with you. Yeah. So. And you, my absolute pleasure. And thank you so much for having me oh. here. That's awesome. And thank you to all of you that have um, tuned into this for joining in the vegan transformation. I hope you've been enriched by our time together. And 
If you gained any benefit from it, please share this with others and also like and subscribe and, and tune in for future interviews and, and videos and conversations. Um, you know, best wishes to all of you on your plant powered journey. And so we'll see you again soon.